safety third. Do I look like your Uncle Bob? Tubers, we got our fire going for the day. So before I get into today's subject, I'll give you a little rundown of what's going on here. I recently picked up a couple of three-wheelers. Now this one here I purchased because it has a rear suspension and a lot better chassis than my 175 Yamaha. I bought that actually new. I was going to cut it up and make that machine electric, but I decided to pick one of these up. Even though it runs great, I think this is going to be my candidate for the electric conversion. And then over here, I picked up the 350. I'm going through every part, front and rear brakes. Uh, right now, I have the master cylinder off here, and uh, I'm going to clean him up and go through them. And the rear caliper, the brake pads are a little, literally gone. So that's the kind of stuff I'm doing on this one here right now. And as we get over here, I've been working on dimmer switches. But first, so many comments last time on the cuckoo clocks. Well, these didn't have pendulum, hands were broke, so I ordered a few things before we get started on it. I'm going to try to make a video. You'll probably get more of a laugh than anything, but we'll see if I can get one of them going. I don't even know the status on them, but should be a little bit of fun. Well, today's topic is going to be dimmer switches. Now you're probably asking yourself, Jeff, they make new ones, which they do. Why don't you just buy some new ones? I have a homemade panel that runs all this lighting in the living room I made years ago. These are the type that are in there. Now you'll notice how much narrower these are for the case itself here. And the problem is I have a whole bunch of these in line. To replace with these, actually I'd have to build a new panel. So, what's going on here? Well, for years, I've been making one good one out of multiple. And these are all gone now, so that's why we had to find some on eBay. But, the other part of this story is, I could only find these in the black. I've been working on these, I reused the ivory part of them and install the guts to make them with the lighted handle with the clear one here. And not only that, the, uh, these are brand new old stock by the way. Uh, these are dimmers, just not your regular light switch as the more you go. Here's safety third. Do I look like your Uncle Bob? <laughs> oh no, sorry I blew up. Anyway, here's what's going on. Uh, like so many other new type things, got to drill out the rivets. I think it's a little easier to see for you, maybe. Get him off. So, that. Yeah, hopefully we don't need any new swear words. And we'll have Adder here. Once the rivet comes off, I'm going to walk it through this plastic housing through. What I do then is I slow down so hopefully we don't bust that plastic hose. Okay, side A, done. Side B. Sometimes my sense of humor is a little tainted. This lady, whenever she brought, bought a brand new car, she'd bring it here and I'd first responder. I'd install a lights and siren. And uh, 
I dropped it off one time. She was with her mom. And I says, well, don't worry. If it starts smoking, I'll unplug it. <laughs> I thought they were going to pick the keys up and leave. And I thought, eh, some people don't appreciate my sick sense of humor. So I kind of cut that out with a few people. Okay. Yeah, let's see how we're doing here. We're off center just a tad. To get her to see it right up. I know, pay attention. There we go. Good. Way off center. Oops. Can't tell a story while I'm working, I guess. Okay, okay. Stop. Okay, due to the operator error, off center. But we got more of these, thankfully. So let's see if we can tappy tappy the rivet out of there. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And we cleared both pieces and we are. Golden. Arr. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Everybody likes bloopers. That was a blooper. Okay, here's what's going on now. Just straighten the wires out here. Yeah, and make sure we get you in the shot. Straighten these wires out. Like so. What we're gonna do is slide the rear cover off because we gotta do one more rivet here. Yep. There, now we're onto the circuit board part of it. And we gotta drill out the rivet on the triac right here. So change the drill bit size and we'll give her a shot. I'm gonna go one size bigger. Take a nip on it now. Pull that in my hand. Get away. We might work here. Let's go real light. There we go. You got her. There. Little bits and pieces, but that'll come off now. So. Scrapey, do not bust the triac. There, cool. We are happening. We have a part what we need now. Let me show you first what's going on here. On your dimmer switches, you know, you got the ones with the knob you push in. Well, that turns on your circuitry for the dim mode. Now, what they have on these is you'll see a set of contacts right here. Well, all the circuitry is off right now until you take it off of that. These contacts close. Now, the circuitry for the dim part is energized. Now, what's neat about these switches, they have a feature none of the other ones do. Not like it's a deal breaker, but when you go full, wide open, them contacts right there, you've probably seen that, them close and then you're going to go full intensity on your light. Now the black handle ones, they, they had all the holes in the circuit board so it ain't like I even had to switch that. I could just put a new neon tube in, grab the resistor and of course I put white grease on everything to lube it up so it works way nicer. I cleaned the points where you can see a little bit of skunk on these where they were sitting for quite some time just to make sure when you're all done they do work and you are all done. But what I wanted to show you folks is you don't have to really know a real lot about this kind of stuff. You just get your meter. If you got a known good component you just go back and forth and test and if the value seems considerably different on something on the board, you can just get another one, switch it out, and you'll be good to go. Uh, this dimmer board here has a problem, and I thought it'd be kind of neat to uh, let's diagnose that right while you folks are here. Maybe some of this information will help you out. Okay, here's our new board. This is the one with an issue. 
let's, uh, I'll show you what I'm going to be looking at. Let's measure the value of this low voltage, which varies the resistance to trigger the high voltage for the rheostat. So these are these two pins here. too far off I think we should be looking elsewhere so let's go to the triac and take a reading on him and he says he is not turned on and this one here is so let's check out this guy right here and he's reading for little high there where he shouldn't be. What we're looking at where I'm going to start with is the reading on this is different. So I'm going to lift solder suck and we're going to pull one of them pins so I can lift it off the circuitry. That'll narrow the issue between is it this guy here or the track. So let's find out. Okay, soldering gun's handy along with the solder sucker. Friend gave me this a while back. There's a pump underneath there that really works good for this but for you folks that do not have one of these they got a thing it's called a wicket it's like a little spool and you pull this out it's use it for this just get the solder off your joints you just take and touch the wick and the soldering gun on it it'll actually pull the solder right up into that wick you wouldn't even need one of these and I use that stuff for years and actually it worked pretty good so but here we we'll use the vacuum pump and we'll have it disconnected from the circuit right now so let's see what we have for reading still and you remember what that was and what does this say so it's looking like we might have a problem with the track Let's get him out of the circuit and we'll try another one and then we'll see how that works. So, away we go. Now we did have an old one here. Well, that guy was good. Now, if you guys kind of like this, what you're seeing here, this is the kind of stuff I dabble in when you're not around. If you're enjoying it, by all means, leave a comment. But no, or better yet, slam the like button. Well, hopefully, anyway. But uh, yeah, let's dibber dabber that in and actually we'll put it together and then see if the thing works. Let's uh, show shop and compare. You remember how this was and what do we got here? Hey, light gully. Tell you what, let's throw this together. Like I said, all I robbed off of this one was the resistor for the neon tube and stuff. So what I'll do, take him back out. You gotta make sure your little contact thing, there you are, is where it's gotta go. No. Okay. Oop, oop. Side A, there we go. Right. <laughs> okay. There he 
slides on. Let's see if the points open up. Yeah, they do. Okay. There you are. Much for the hell of it. Let's throw it back on it. Hope I'm standing the camera view here. Okay, there we go. Let's see if it works on one man. Okay. And we're off. And way cool. Way cool. Way cool. So, then the top the rest of the switch is off. What I've been doing is put some lithium on your friction points and on the end of that piece that pushes for the points. Then, you take a heat transfer gel, you put it on a triac right here, put your plate on, and this is actually a heat sink to dissipate heat off of the triac. Put a rivet in there, you dig through your kitty litter box here, and you come up with a few of these, and no longer riveted, now we bolt it, and the switch would be done. And because of the lithium and everything else, this is all works way better than new. <laughs> Bang! Now I can go home. No. <laughs> Let's show you some more stuff. Now here's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the day for you folks that might be curious. This is the master cylinder uh, for the rear brakes, which is no longer available for that machine. So, I have sandblasted it, and you always plug off all the passages. Here, I'll show you what I got here. The bore was a little bit skunky, so what I did, I made up, uh, that's a red scuffy pad. Chucked them in a drill with a rear ear, and this is what you end up with. I'll show you how that looks. Wow, what uh, did yeah, everything else got her cleaned up best as I can and we're gonna reuse this so I'm gonna go back to working on this until the darkness comes around then we're gonna head off to the living room and continue yeah Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo. we're in the house this will be your first look at the homemade dimmer panel now this is something I made here years ago and it's actually located on my table next to where I sit. Now from here you can control the entire living room lighting. But the house actually has authority over this. But we're gonna get into that. We'll get into that on another video. This gets too kind of complex. But anyway, I wanted to show you. I have two fuses here. This is for your top row lighting and which is all controlled off this dimmer here and got the normal people lighting reading lighting yada yada off that one now the other here controls all these things around the whole living room you probably see more and more come on it gets brighter brighter but I'm gonna show you what the, this all does here I'm getting ahead of the game here so let's do this now we're gonna blow a fuse here and this is for your lower. I have what's a uh, 5 amp glass fuse in these holders. Let's say if something was short, it takes nothing to pop out a 5 amp fuse. And of course your light comes on. On the fuse holder. These are kind of neat really. Uh, anyway, uh, this is uh, your above shelf lighting here. And uh, next item, these are some spots that shine and light on a stained glass bird. And actually, if I turn these all the way up, the lighting for the bird is actually, it's way good in person. The camera kind of like goes, holy cow, yeah, it don't, uh, it don't capture the effects real good. I can make the bird move. I'll show you this trick here. And we can make the bird move, like I said, right there.
to which here this would be for actual on the top of another shelf lighting which lights up trinkets and glass widgets and skibs gibs now if you don't like the color of him I can change him to red so we even do that like the birds here well, well, get you the shot yeah okay moving on we got some stained glass lamps that turn on and then uh, my other lamp up in the corner I'll show you this uh, actually has two wires going to it this old uh, style whatever is lamp I don't know whatever they call it but anyway uh, this here I can do the bottom lighting on it or the top with these switches here and actually a reading lamp okay let's say if I die somebody moves in they don't want Jeff's crap now the house has authority over right now it's on my panel crap but as soon as you take it off that click the house has authority over my panel so you can throw all that crap away that I have next to me and you come over the house is talking beyond that panel right now has nothing to do the house has full control over that panel if desired now I got to show you this one too let's continue on and we have some more switches here throw that one oh crap the lights went off okay you throw the next switch oh the lights come back on we're running off there's one of the indicators up there anyway yeah we're running off uh, 12 volts right now and that'll power the living room there's a light in each hallway the bedrooms that all comes on like a little 3 watt light when you throw that on and we can go back to your line voltage there now we're back on your line voltage and if you run out of juice on the backup batteries and 12 volt you can always go get the PTO generator with the Kubota but wait there's more uh, say okay you want to turn up the heat a little bit here you got a red light the red light indicates the money light the burners on okay let's get a little goofier we'll put the yellow light on what's the yellow light for you ask that means the humidifier is on and sometimes I'll put the fan on to clear the air in the room I'll turn that back off and uh, you can circulate around clean the air if you wish and the uh, blue light means the central air units running so some little LEDs that's what you do when you got a slow day on a Sunday you call that kind of crap up so and yeah, now we're in the kitchen somewhere down the road we'll cover some more thingies here yeah, that. Yeah. somewhere down the road We'll cover some more of my non-traditional that some of you folks I think are getting me figured out stuff. Well, hey tubers, I hope you enjoyed this one. Man, I come in and do these shoots, I come in with a jumbled up mess with a lot of not worth watching time, which makes a heck of a lot of time in the editing room, as they would say. But anyway, thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed the video. and like to catch you back here again.